بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so probably in this section we'll talk about vlans and trunking so if you remember in the previous sections we discussed about some of the basics of ethernet switching basics like how the switches uh, receive or forward the frames how they identify the mac addresses and how they maintain the mac table or update the mac table to make forwarding decisions so probably in this section probably we'll be talking about vlans what is vlan virtual lan why we divide that what are the reasons what are the benefits and then also we'll talk about trunking options where if the vlans are spanned over multiple switches then how we are going to enable the vlan communication so before we go ahead with the vlan concepts first thing we'll try to understand what is a broadcast domain because here when we say vlan divides one single broadcast domain into multiple but in order to understand that we need to understand what is broadcast domain Now the broadcast domain means uh, it is a set of devices receiving the broadcast, which is originated from any one of the devices within the set. So, if you remember in the switch basics, we discussed that the switches will uh, forward the Ethernet frames if they don't uh, know the destination MAC address. Like we have discussed that the switch is an intelligent device already. because the switch has a mechanism to maintain something called mac table and we can verify that mac table by using show mac hyphen address table and in that mac table it is going to maintain on which port number what is the mac address connected now based on this if the if the mac entry destination mac entry if it is present in the mac table then i said it is going to forward as a unicast on that particular port and if it is not present then it is going to do flooding so it will broadcast out of all the interfaces so in this broadcast let's say if you take the same example here there is a this device pc1 and this device want to send a request to the pc2 so assume the mac address is h1 h2 something now now what happens here is when this pc sends a request to the switch1 and the switch1 is going to check the mac table and assuming that there is no entry so i'm assuming that the switch do not have the destination mac okay if it is present then there is no problem but if the destination entry is not present then it is going to do broadcast which means it's going to send out of all the interfaces also it will send out of this interface and this interface right the interfaces which are connecting to other switches and from there the same thing the switch 2 will receive this broadcast and the switch 2 also will do the same thing it will check the mac table and if the entry is present it will do unicast if there is no entry it will broadcast which means again let's assume this switch do not have an entry it will broadcast out of all the interfaces as well as on this port right as well as here of course it will go to everywhere everywhere so by default when the switch receives a broadcast it will forward them like when you when the switch receives a broadcast it is going to forward out of all the interfaces that is by default and how long your broadcast will go that boundary we call it as a broadcast domain which means if you take the same example here uh, here let's say there is a computer which is sending a request to the switch and the switch do not have a destination a mac address entry so it is going to broadcast out of all the interfaces and it will forward to the next switch and that switch will also do the same thing if there is no entry so we don't have an entry so it will broadcast out of all the interfaces also it will broadcast on the interface which is connecting to the next switch and the same thing here it will check the destination mac entry if there is no entry so it will broadcast out of all the interfaces of course all the interfaces means and every interface which is connecting to computer router whatever the interface and then that switch will again forward the broadcast to the next switch again here also the same thing happens if there is no destination entry so like that it will go and it will stop on the router now when the router receives now the router is not going to forward the broadcast now normally switches will forward from one interface to another interface but when the router receives any broadcast request on one interface it will not forward on other interface because typically router is uh, is not a, like a switch it will it is just generally connect two different networks so this is one lan and maybe it is connecting another lan here 
So it will not forward the broadcast from one network to another network or one LAN to another LAN. Which means my broadcast request is going how long? So this is your domain, right? So nothing but it represents a LAN. So you can compare the broadcast domain as the size of the LAN. Okay and the number of devices within the LAN receiving the broadcast. Just like if you compare the broadcast domain with a hall. So the bigger the hall, the bigger the size of the broadcast domain, right? So let's say if there are 300 people in this hall. So basically if anyone shouts, probably everyone can listen within that hall. Or if you take an example of your cabin, it's a small cabin, and if someone shouts here, talks here, basically that is specific to that cabin. So generally, a broadcast domain you refer, refer as a LAN. But again, the size of the broadcast domain depends upon the size of the LAN. So if you're connecting 300 devices, which means if one device generates a broadcast, the broadcast will reach the remaining 299 devices. Similar way, if you, are, if you have 10 people, and if one device generates a broadcast, the broadcast may go to remaining nine devices. So how long the broadcast will go depends upon the size of the LAN. So the number of devices you connect and that many receives, that many devices receives the broadcast domain. And by default, when the router receives any broadcast traffic, by default, it will break that. It will not allow or it will not forward. So which means there is a separate broadcast domain. Each LAN we can say as separate broadcast domain. So you need to understand this broadcast domain. This is important. Uh, basically, the LAN includes all the devices within the same broadcast domain. You can say one LAN is a part of one broadcast domain. So again, if you take this example, one more example here, number of broadcast domains. How many broadcast domains you have? It totally depends upon the number of LANs you have or number of VLANs. We'll talk about VLANs concept next. Like in this case, let's say I have one LAN here because router is separating. So the broadcast coming from here, it will be restricted up to here. And the broadcast coming from here, it will be restricted up to here. So which means how many broadcast domains we have? So we have three broadcast domains. So generally, when you face this certification exam questions, you may be given this kind of topologies and asked how many broadcast domains we have. So simply you have to count the number of LANs or the VLANs in your network. Okay, so again, we'll be using the concept of VLANs. That's something next. Uh, we'll break the broadcast domains for optimization.